All right, guys, so following up on the delta circuit, so let's look at the y circuit equations. Uh, we're slowly building up to understand that transformer that we normally hook up out in the field, a delta to y transformer, a three wire in and a four wire out. So let's look at the, the y circuits. So let's drop in a number of windings here. So I've got my first transformer, there's my star point, then I've got another transformer, and another guy in here as well. Okay, here, let's clean this up a touch. Okay, beautiful. And then let's do our external connections on the outside as well. So here we'd have our line one. Then we've got line two and line three over here. Okay, I think in class I had the conductors going out in the opposite direction. It doesn't really matter. I'm just leaving room here so I can put all of my equations for a Y circuit. So let's take this guy on the same way. We're going to look at this one. We're going to say, all right, is this a series or a parallel circuit? Well, here we're saying that this is probably the, the secondary of the transformer. So the current is going out of the transformer. And at that point, it looks like there's only one path for that current to flow. All right, going from line one to line two, there's only one path for current to flow. Whereas in the delta, there was two paths. So I want you to think of the Y circuits from now on as a series circuit. And we know that in a series circuit, the current is the same. So that's going to help us out when it comes to the equations. Okay, same as before. Any values that are on the outside, I think we did the, uh, the voltage in blue on the previous video. So let's keep going with that. So any value that is on the outside is going to be a line value. So there's my line voltage. Any value that's on the inside is going to be a phase voltage. Okay, so right across the winding is my phase value. And from line to line is my line voltage. Okay, again, we're going to look at these two points right here, right here and right there those two volt points right there that would be the same as my line voltage and you can see that to get from here to there i have a the same connection that's the same piece of wire but to go from this connection up to the other side of my winding i have to go through the other winding on the transformer so there's no way that this line voltage can be the exact same as that phase voltage okay so where the relationship in a y circuit is that the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage multiplied by root 3. And we said that essentially root 3 is 1.732. Okay, If we want to simplify that in like an Ohm's Law chart, then again we can put our V line on the top. Then we've got V phase. Sorry guys. V phase and multiply that by root 3. Then we can find all the different nuances in that equation, right? We can find our phase voltage by taking our line voltage and dividing by root 3. Excellent. Okay. So this line voltage is always greater than the phase voltage by root 3. Let's look at our currents. We'll come back to those voltages in a little bit when we talk about like standard values for voltage. All right. On the outside of the circuit, any value on the outside of the circuit is going to be a line value. Any value on the inside of the circuit, where are we going to put that? Maybe right here. Any value on the inside of the circuit is going to be a phase value. Okay, we can see here that there's only one path for that current to flow there. And we said that a Y circuit was similar to a series circuit. So now we can throw in our relationship for current. Our line current is identical to our phase current. Right? We're going to think of this guy as a series circuit. Series circuit currents are identical. So I line equals I phase in a Y circuit. doesn't matter if these are resistors or coils or capacitors. These rules still hold true. Okay. Aside from that, um, let's see. Let's throw in some values for current. So if I had before on the delta, I had 
here I had 10 amps on the phase. Well, now we know that on the line, that guy is also going to be 10 amps on the line. So the values on the inside and the outside for current will be identical. Now, when we were going through basic or intermediate, we found that the power equations were always the same for both series and parallel circuits. So this equation for VA is going to be identical to the one that we found for the delta circuit. So VA is equal to V line times I line, so voltage times current. Those are three phase values, so we're going to multiply those guys by root three. Or we said that we can find our VA value by taking our single phase value, V phase times I phase, and again, there are one, two, three phases. So we're going to multiply that guy by three. Those will provide us with the exact same values. Okay, let's take uh, an arbitrary voltage of, um, let's take 208 volts here for our line voltage. And if we want to find our phase voltage, well, our phase voltage should be equal to V line divided by root 3. And if we want to find that, then we'll take what our V line was uh, 2 8. So let's grab our calculator. And let's go uh, 208 volts. Let's turn this by the way on. So we've got 2 8. For our line voltage, we're going to divide that by the square root of 3. And hit equals. And you can see that the voltage on the phase is going to be 120 volts. So 2, 8, and 120 are always going to go together now. Okay, so our phase voltage here is going to be 120 volts on the phase. Okay, we looked at these equations before and we saw that they were identical, but let's just make sure again. So here we've got this equal to 208 volts on the line. Our line current is 10 amps. And we're going to multiply that by 1.732, or by root 3, right? So let's bring up our calculator again. And we've got, in this case, we've got 208. And we're going to multiply that by 10 amps. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3. And that gives us... 3,602.66. Excellent. Okay. Now you can see that the the same phase value on a on a Y. Well, now we're at different voltages, right? But I was going to say that the the power value is a lot uh, less than the Y. But that's not really apparent. We'll see that later on. Um, okay. So moving on, let's just make sure that this guy is the same. So V phase times I phase times 3. So our phase voltage is 120 volts on the phase. Our phase current is 10 amps on the phase. And we're going to multiply that by 3. And hopefully that gives us a value close to 3602. Okay, so we'll clear this guy out. We've got 120 times 10. And we'll multiply that by 3, and that gives us 3600 VA. Okay, so essentially those guys are exactly the same. Excellent. Okay, that same equation for, uh, for wattage is still going to hold true. So for our watts, remember that in the background we've always got a uh, power factor is equal to watts over VA. So if we want to find wattage, we can take our VA, so we can take V line times I line times root 3, and we can multiply that by our power factor, and that'll give us our wattage. Or using the phase values, our watts is going to be equal to V phase times I phase times 3, and we'll multiply that by our power factor, and that's going to provide us with our wattage as well. Excellent. Okay, so let's just, before we stop, let's look at uh, all this, the various voltages that you're going to see out in the field.
when it comes to Y circuits. So we've got uh, 122, 8. Where are we going to put that? We need a place to uh, drop that in. So let's erase this here and we'll just throw in our standard voltages that we're going to see on a Y circuit. So we've got, and hopefully we'll have enough room for everything here. So we've got 120 volts. Let's do that in a different color. So we got 120 volts on the phase, and that gives us 28 volts on the line. Okay, we've also got uh, another standard voltage. I mean, I'm from Canada, so in Canada we use uh, 347. So if we have 347 volts on the phase, we're going to have 600 volts on the line. Right, so that would mean that this value right here was 347 from line to neutral, and this value right here is 600 volts. And looking at this, we forgot to put in our, our labels here, so this one would be X1, this would be X2, this would be X3, and our neutral here is going to be XO. So from X1 to XO, X2 to XO, and X3 to XO, uh, we'd have 347 volts. Okay, what other voltages do we have out there? Well, from America we've got 277 volts on the phase and we've got 480 volts on the line. So this voltage right here is 277 volts on the phase and this voltage right here is 480 volts on the line. These are all different transformers. Right? Like this would be one transformer, 122.8 for plugs and receptacles and lighting. Uh, this would be a separate transformer, 347.600 for lighting. Uh, America, you would have 277, 480. And then what other voltages are out there? There's one value that is uh, 240. So 240 volts on the phase. So 240 volts on the phase. And that's actually from line to neutral. We're used to seeing 240 volts from line to line. And if we take that 240 and multiply it by root 3, so 240 oops, times 240 times the square root of 3, that gives us 415.69, which we usually call 416. Beautiful. Okay, so that gives us all of our standard voltages. 122.8, 347.600 are our standard voltages in Canada. 277, 480 would be from anything coming from the States. And then we're also going to see uh, 240 and 416. Right, so that 416 would be here on our line voltage. Excellent. If you guys have any other voltages, uh, I'm only um, used to seeing 122.8, 346.10. 347, 600, 277, 480. You've never actually seen anything that goes from 240 to 416. Uh, but leave in the comments below if you have, have other voltages on your line and phase throughout the world. All right, guys. Thanks for your patience. We'll check out the next video.